That's the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra playing Rule Britannia. And we now know that that is the way it will be heard on the last night of the proms, the instrumental version rather than the words. The suggestion that it wouldn't be heard at all this year sparked interventions from the Prime Minister down. And Michael Fabricant is the Conservative MP for Litchfield. Good morning, Mr Fabricant. Good morning, Michelle. What do you think of where we've got to on this? I think it's all very sad, actually. I mean, there are some lovely words to rule Britannia. It's not just all about rule Britannia and Britain shouldn't be slaves. You've got other nations not so blessed as thee must in their turn to tyrants fall while thou shalt flourish great and free. I mean, isn't that lovely? It was written back in 1740. And what was happening then? There was the War of Austrian Succession with which Britain was involved. But it was also a time when the British... Uh, allowed nationality for Huguenots and Jews overseas. So Britain was a great and liberal trading nation. And, and you're assuming in what you're saying that, that the row was very much about about the words. I mean, assuming that there was a row, there's certainly been a row in the press over it in the last couple of days. But do you appreciate that there would, there would always been a difficulty, in fact, an impossibility of having the last night of the proms as we know it, given social distancing, given government guidance on singing? Mm, but I do understand that the national anthem will be sung and Jerusalem will be sung. So it seems as if they're just really trying to uh, pick out these two songs. And, uh, you know, we have tradition in Britain. I rather like the quote, by the way, from Oliver Dowden, the culture secretary, who said, confident, forward-looking nations don't erase their history. They add to it. And, you know, Britain's history is not all bad. We abolished slavery in 1807, more than 50 years before the United States got round to that. And that's something of which we can be proud. Right. But you're right that the national anthem will be sung, Jerusalem will be sung, you'll never walk alone will be sung. That will be by soloists. It would be quite different, wouldn't it, to hear, I mean, they would be diminished, these two anthems being I could sung live by, with a, that, Michelle. by, I could by live a single with that. voice. Would, would, wouldn't it sound quite thin compared to Land of Hope and Glory as we know it with all of those voices, you know, joining in unison? Well, you know, I'm not being unreasonable here. We are living through a pandemic. But, you know, you say uh, thin voices. I'm not so sure about that. Um, Royal Britannia is actually the final aria of a lovely opera, which was partly written in uh, my hometown of Litchfield, uh, my home city, I should say, of Litchfield, um, The Mask of uh, Alfred. And when you hear some of these opera singers belting it out, I don't think you would say that's a thin voice. And I'm happy with that compromise. Let's just have a single voice singing those words proudly. Why not? You know, there's nothing wrong with a bit of tradition. And it's a beautiful tune. Michael Fabricant, Conservative MP, thank you very much.